Hi, this is Namrata Gulati Safra, Deputy Editor at Saur Energy International. We are at InterSolar being held in Ahmedabad. With us is Mr. Rahul Bhutiani, Sales and Marketing Head at Adani Solar. Thank you so much for joining us for a conversation. Thank you. Firstly, many congratulations on the launch of the Mono Silicon Ingot. Uh, please tell us about this uh, big initiative. Sure. So, uh, we've already shared at various uh, times in the past uh, our vision of uh, becoming a fully integrated uh, 10 gigawatt capacity uh, in India. And when we say fully integrated, it will be a vertically fully integrated capacity. And part of that uh, vision is to go deeper into the supply chain from just uh, being in cells and modules to also manufacturing ingot and wafer and at some point in time uh, also get into manufacturing polysilicon. So this is the first backward integration step we have taken. We have uh, set up our, uh, we, are, uh, we are setting up a 2 gigawatt ingot wafer manufacturing facility and the ingot that we have displayed here at InterSolar is uh, from one of those uh, pullers that we have installed and this is uh, the pilot project that we took up and uh, this is the first uh, ingot that we pulled from that uh, puller and we've displayed here for us to see, for India to see that uh, we will soon and India can soon create its own independent supply chain. Okay. Uh, so uh, tell us, you know, uh, markets such as US and Australia, they are also really opening up and warming up to the idea of solar. So do you think that Indian manufacturers have a good opportunity of, uh, you know, going overseas as well? Uh, I'm not very sure about Australia, but US has definitely come up with an interesting uh, policy uh, to encourage manufacturing within the US. And I am aware uh, of a lot of Indian manufacturers evaluating this opportunity. I don't know if uh, people, Indian manufacturers will definitely go abroad and set up facilities, but there are some serious evaluations going on. Uh, what is also important uh, and the context that needs to be kept in mind is that while US has created an interesting opportunity for manufacturing in US, India has also created a very interesting opportunity for manufacturers to, cre to create more facilities in, in India through the PLI scheme. So I think it will be a, 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 an, an opportunity is large both in India and in the US in terms of offtake for manufacturers. So I think it will be a trade-off and it will be an evaluation that uh, uh, you know, various companies will do for themselves whether to look at India as the manufacturing base or also look at US and other countries as a manufacturing base. Uh, so, you have also partnered with the various firms for offtake uh, arrangements. So, please tell us about that. And do you think that this will give a push uh, to the smaller uh, players? So, uh, the idea again is emanating from the same vision that I talked about earlier. We want to have complete control on the supply chain and uh, not only just vertical integration of the uh, module supply chain from polysilicon to modules, uh, but also the ancillary units that support the making of a module. So if you, if you know, I'm sure you're aware, but a module needs glass, needs uh, an aluminum, aluminum frame, needs a back sheet, needs EVA, right? And a junction box, etc. So for a module to be actually assembled together. Uh, not just cells, not just wafers in cells, but also all these other components. Uh, currently, a lot of these components are being imported uh, from China and other Southeast Asian countries. The attempt right now that we are doing is to try and create this entire ancillary supply chain also within the country. And in that, uh, uh, you know, with that idea in mind, we have created some joint venture companies where we are uh, enabling, uh, you know, setting up of these ancillary units close to our factory. Like our mother factory is the module manufacturing facility and you have these ancillary units close to the mother uh, factory supporting this, uh, you know, this module manufacturing facility. So that's how we are looking at uh, investing in uh, companies which are helping ensure that we have complete control on the supply chain, not just vertically, but also all the ancillaries. And uh, do you think that polycrystalline uh, modules are now a thing of the past and that they're around only for six months or a year or so? So we were uh, manufacturing and selling polysilicon, uh, poly, uh, polycrystalline silicon modules for, uh, till I think Ju July, uh, August of uh, 2022. Uh, we have discontinued and we have uh, switched to monocrystalline. 
uh, they are better if they have better efficiency and are the uh, and and therefore uh, have a better lcoe in terms of projects uh, lesser surface area needed to, uh, to generate the same amount of electricity that a uh, poly, poly module was uh, you know was doing so considering all those factors uh, we believe that mono would be the right technology to adopt uh, and uh, so we gave up uh, poly it's not that it's a, it, it's something that needs to be given up it's just that this is more efficient and therefore more need of the r than maybe poly i'm sure there must be a market for poly uh, in some form or way it's still existing in maybe india or some other parts of the world but uh, our view is that uh, we need to move forward with higher efficiency uh, products and uh, therefore the first step is monopark we've also invested in uh, two, for 2 gigawatts of uh, topcon facility and the balance uh, 6 8 gigawatts of additional capacity that we are planning we will be evaluating the latest technologies including hjt uh, before we decide on what technology to pursue please also tell us about your distribution network yeah we've uh, we've uh, we believe india is a very large market and uh, besides the utility scale projects uh, that uh, buy in bulk there is also a great demand uh, for distributed solar uh, and which means that you know the residential segment the agriculture pump segment solar pump segment and that needs uh, availability and presence across the country in uh, you know smaller areas too or in far flung areas too and obviously we can't reach these areas directly so we have therefore been creating uh, depending on a distribution network uh, in the past also we have focused on creating a large distribution network uh, we are currently uh, maybe enjoying one of the best distribution networks uh, in terms of depth in terms of quality of distributors and their commitment to the brand and to the cause we want to ensure that our distribution network is geared to be able to supply to the smallest corner of the country and make adani solar modules available to the to every indian in some form or way and uh, what about the performance of your exports uh well this year has been a good year for indian manufacturers in exports and of course we've also uh, taken our share of exports uh in in the current year and we have some forward bookings for next year too it's been a good year is what i can say uh, with respect to exports and uh, we believe uh, uh, considering the uh, focus on uh, by a large number of countries on solar and also their preference of uh, creating an alternate supply base uh, other than china uh, holds uh, uh, you know holds us in good stead and we should be able to uh, continue our uh, you know uh, good work and good uh, performance in the solar Uh, space and uh, what is your outlook on uh, solar price trends both in short term and long term right so uh, short term uh, you know we are we are going to continue to depend on china uh, for uh, most of our critical raw materials and so our prices in india will continue to be governed by the price movements that the chinese follow uh over maybe the medium term and long term we will see uh, some of the price control coming back to india uh in the short term i don't see a very significant fall in prices uh but a fall is due uh maybe it will take 3 months 6 months 9 months for it to happen but we should see a declining trend in maybe the next 3 to 6 months may not be very steep but definitely we should see some decline over the next 3 to 6 months Uh, there is also talk about you know marketing solar like any other uh, you know consumer durable what is uh, your view of that especially with the regards to the residential sector so um, see the uh, solar system is actually uh, is is not just a module so while module is uh, maybe the heart of the solar uh, generation system uh, solar power system the uh, The, the system has a number of other components too so you have an inverter you have a structure you have cabling right so so there is a thought that you know can we just bundle this up into one box and you know make it like a retail product off the shelf you could buy it uh, my belief is we are a little distance away from that yet uh, primarily because there is uh, 
there is there is some skill in how the cabling should be done and you know what kind of structures are needed some element of uh, even customization needed for different roof types and different roof of space availability etc in the structure so uh, it will continue to remain as a service that is rendered by epc or a contractor epc player and therefore uh, uh, we will continue to see uh, you know this being sold more like a b2b product rather than a than a you know consumer product however i will also say that consumers you know the marketing of the product will uh, move forward in a fashion that consumers will have a say in which module to buy right and that's what uh, i think consumer marketing uh, uh, will uh, require and will involve going forward thank you so much for joining us thank you thank